My great joy to minister the Word of God to you this morning once again. Will you take your Bibles and turn to Revelation chapter 18. Over the course of many months, we have now arrived to chapter 18, and this morning we will focus on the first three verses. Let me read them to you. Revelation 18. After these things, I saw another angel coming down from heaven, having great authority, and the earth was illumined with his glory. And he cried out with a mighty voice, saying, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the great, and she has become a dwelling place of demons and a prison of every unclean spirit and a prison of every unclean and hateful bird. For all the nations have drunk of the wine of the passion of her immorality, and the kings of the earth have committed acts of immorality with her, and the merchants of the earth have become rich by the wealth of her sensuality. We approach the Word of God again this Lord's Day morning with a sense of deep reverence and anticipation. We come once again to examine the Apocalypse is Jesu Christu. The Apocalypse is the uncovering, the unveiling, a revelation of divine truth that was once hidden. And here we find once again the Lord Jesus Christ disclosing to us the amazing chronology of events that will define the final days of man's rebellion upon the earth and his glorious return as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. May I remind you that in the Lord's revelation in verse 19 of chapter 1, the Lord himself outlines this book. He first speaks of the things which you have seen a reference to a vision of the glorified Christ in chapter 1. And then he wants the Apostle John to record, secondly, the things which are. And in chapters 2 and 3, we read of letters to the seven prominent churches of that day that are representative of all churches down through church history. And then thirdly, the things which will take place after these things, after the church has been translated into heaven at the rapture, in chapters 4 through the rest of the book, we read of the seal and the trumpet and the bowl judgments. We read of the details of the rise and the fall of the coming Antichrist and his global empire, the rise and the fall of the false prophet and the harlot church that he will lead. We read of the protection and redemption of Israel, the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, the millennial kingdom and the eternal state. And as we piece all of these prophecies together in the word of God, not just in the book of Revelation, but throughout, we get a much bigger picture of that which will one day transpire. Let me give you that picture yet again so that you understand the overall flow of the prophetic word. After the church has been translated into heaven, I believe that chaos will ensue around the world, especially in the United States of America. This country will be instantly crippled. This will be the perfect time for the Russian-Arab alliance that the Lord prophesies through Ezekiel in chapter Ezekiel 38 and 39, the battle of Gog and Magog where this alliance will come down on Israel and will be defeated. At that time, the world will recognize the power of the God of Israel. And the Jews will finally be able to rebuild their temple on the Temple Mount in place of the Islamic Dome of the Rock that piece of ground that is the most disputed parcel in all of the world this day. And during this time, 
A diabolical leader will arise, that the Bible calls the Antichrist, and he will offer a false peace to the world to bring order out of the chaos that has just occurred because of the rapture and as a result of the defeat of the massive Red Army and the Islamic forces. And he will, on behalf of a European confederacy, sign a covenant or a peace treaty with Israel, who will at that time enjoy enormous clout in the world. And during the first half of what is called the tribulation, the tribulation being triggered by that covenant that the Antichrist signs, the world will experience the beginning of God's judgments. The seal judgments and the trumpet judgments will rain down upon the earth and bring catastrophic destruction and death. Yet during this season of judgment, the Antichrist will offer the world a spiritual explanation for all of the things that are happening as to why the God of Israel is doing these things. And they will know that it is him and they will follow the Antichrist who is called the beast and they will blaspheme the triune God and worship the Antichrist instead. And also during this time, Satan and his demons, who by now will be confined to the earth, will assist the Antichrist in creating a hugely successful empire that the Lord calls Babylon the Great, where commerce will flourish and create enormous wealth around the world. We must understand that Satan understands man's sinful nature and his utter addiction to materialism. So he will supply him with the opiate of wealth. Every politician knows that if you can create wealth for the masses, they will follow him anywhere. The key to a man's vote is his pocketbook. You see, man lives for this life, not for the next. Man lives for himself, not for God. Satan understands this. In fact, a politician's character and policies may be as vile as Lucifer himself. But if he can make people wealthy, or at least make them think that he can, they will turn their head at his, uh, away from his character and worship him as though he were God. During the first half of the tribulation, this political, commercial, and even military empire of the Antichrist will coexist with the false prophet who will head up a false religious system, what Revelation 17.5 calls a mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of all harlots. And of course, that is a fitting description given the fact that they were all spawned at Babel as we have studied in great detail in our study of chapter 17. The false prophet will use his alleged miracle working abilities to deceive the world into worshiping the Antichrist and wearing the mark that he will require on their bodies. And the Antichrist will initially use this religious system to both unify as well as control the nations of the world so that he can advance his political agenda. While many people will be saved during that time because of the testimony of the 144,000, because of the two witnesses, the angelic preachers, and many saints who will come to Christ during that time, both Jew and Gentile, many will be martyred. Towards the end of the first half of the tribulation, the Antichrist will fake his death and resurrection and desecrate the Jewish temple in Jerusalem. And at that point, he will establish himself as God and demand that the world worship him. At that point also, he and other nations that are part of his confederacy will turn against the harlot church. It will be destroyed. And during this second half of the tribulation, towards the end, right before the Lord returns,